Max Weber was a German political economist, philosopher, and sociologist who is regarded as one of the key figures in the development of modern social theory. He was born in Erfurt, Germany in 1864 and died in Munich in 1920. Weber's research centered on how institutions and social structures shape human behaviors and societal functions. He was particularly interested in how capitalism impacted the emergence of bureaucratic systems and social organization. The ideal type was one of Weber's most significant contributions to sociology. He stated that in order to comprehend complex social processes, social scientists should utilize ideal types. An ideal type is a simplified abstract representation of a social phenomenon that captures its key characteristics. It's important to note that when Max Weber uses the term ideal, he does not mean perfection, but rather the realm of ideas of mental images. These ideal types are idea constructs that help put the seeming chaos of social reality in order. Weber described four categories of ideal types of behavior. Traditional, effectual, value rational, and instrumental rational. 1. Traditional action is behavior that is governed by custom or habit. For example, I am going to Sunday Mass because my family and neighbors go there as well. Everybody's doing it. 2. Effectual action is driven by emotions or feelings in which we are determined by effects. For example, I buy a lot of toilet paper because there are pandemics. Panic mode on. 3. Value rational action is motivated by a commitment to certain values or beliefs. It's like I joined the army because I love my country. That doesn't usually end well though. 4. Instrumental rational action is focused on achieving specific goals, like I study in order to pass the exam, or I watch people talking about how to become a millionaire while chewing on a bag of chips and half-open pistachios. The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, Weber's best-known book, examines the connection between religion and economic growth. According to Weber's argument in this book, the growth of Protestantism in Europe during the 16th and 17th centuries contributed to the conditions necessary for the emergence of capitalism. He argues that early capitalists' values and ideas were significantly shaped by the Protestant work ethic, which placed an emphasis on hard work and frugality. The teachings of John Calvin in particular, according to Weber, had a significant influence on the growth of the capitalist ethos. Calvinists hold the doctrine of predestination, which believes that only a certain number of souls will enter heaven, with special spots reserved for the fortunate. The majority of Calvinists, though, were worried that there wouldn't be any seats set up for them in paradise. It's something like wanting to go to a Tool concert, but there is a limited number of tickets. Yet Calvinists thought that their actions in this life, including their hard work, was a sign of their eternal destiny. Now you might assume that someone who believed in this predestination-based doctrine would see no value in making an effort to lead a good, sinless life. Yet, the reality was quite the contrary. Sinful behavior is the surest sign that you are not among the chosen, even if God's opinion of you cannot be changed by any amount of virtuous, sinless living. Thus, if you want to enter heaven, you need to live a good, sinless life and hope for the best. Furthermore, according to Weber, Catholics have it easier when it comes to their religious practices than Protestants. A Catholic is able to confess his or her transgressions in a magic box called the confessional and can be cleansed by priests after running over the neighbor's annoying dog. Protestants, however, do not have access to such means of forgiveness since they believe that only God is able to pardon sin and that he will reveal his purposes on the day of judgment. Until then, Weber claimed that Protestants are left with heightened anxiety and a lifelong urge to repent and prove their virtue to an all-seeing God who cannot be contacted through a confessional nor a telephone booth. Another issue raised by Weber was the idea that Catholics restricted their idea of holy activity to church work, like the activities of priests, monks, nuns, and so on. While Protestants declared that all work is holy, like being a teacher, a builder, or a certified drug dealer known as a pharmacist. Protestants believe that work is a calling from God and that all forms of work can be seen as holy 
if they are carried out with the right motives and attitude. This implies that Protestants see their labor as a means of glorifying God. Moreover, material wealth was interpreted by Protestants as a sign of God's preference, indicating one's salvation, which is in contrast to the Catholics' viewpoint who considered the accumulation of wealth for its own sake was regarded as sinful and arrogant. All this led to a focus on self-discipline and hard work as a way to demonstrate one's salvation. Weber referred to this as the Protestant work ethic. Say goodbye to working to live and say hello to living to work. A modern example which we can refer to today, or at least to try to connect to the idea of the Protestant work ethic, is the act of content creation on social media. Social media platforms demand content creators to keep on posting regularly, editing their videos, finding a format for their videos, noting that the desired format is always changing, and then finally after sharing the content, the creator has to promote it. And after that, the creators might have to go through designing their merchandise, promoting it as well, and trying to sell it in order to cover some of the costs that were initially spent on promoting and different expenses to create content. So in other words, content creators are always on the run and they have to adapt to the constant changes of platforms. At the same time, content creators might perceive themselves as self-employed and running their own business while working constantly to feed the platforms, which is only done by constant work. To sum up, Weber argues that the Protestant work ethic was essential to the establishment of capitalism because it fostered a culture of hard work and frugality that was favorable to economic expansion. The emphasis on using one's job to demonstrate one's salvation also contributed in reducing the established social class distinctions and paved the way for social mobility. There has been much discussion and opposition to Weber's views on the Protestant work ethic. Some critics think that Weber overemphasized the significance of religion and the growth of capitalism, while others suggest that his theory is overly Eurocentric and ignores the influence of other cultures on economic development. Despite these criticisms, Max Weber's ideas continue to be influential in sociology, economics, and political science today. His focus on the role of social structures and institutions in shaping human behavior has helped to increase our understanding of societal functions. His concept of the ideal type has been used to study political systems and religious movements.